up you guys so i've been brainstorming some sex and dating relationship topics and i realized how hard it is to approach any of these topics without addressing the massive elephant in the room that is the apps. the apps apps have officially taken over three quarters of young adults have used dating apps and about three quarters or more of the people that i've talked to about them actually hate them. So uh, all hail our algorithmic overlords, I guess. But it got me thinking because at least in theory, dating apps should be a great idea. So why are they so exhausting and demoralizing? I have a few theories. One is just that, you know, dating apps are a type of social media. And like all of the other videos I've made about social media on my channel, there's a lot of problems. But outside of all of that stuff, there is one big bombshell about dating apps that I actually haven't seen many people talk about. It's largely invisible and yet it almost certainly has an enormous impact on our experience using these apps. And that, my dears, is the sausage factor. Dating apps take the cake in the social media world for being the most male dominated. How male dominated are we talking here? A report published just this April found that 76% of active Tinder users are male. I was shocked to learn that in the UK and Italy, Tinder is 90% male. 90%? What? Now, if I'm putting on my tinfoil hat, you know, the reason why this isn't really discussed in the news or media is because the apps really don't want people to know this, and why would they? That has zero effect. It works out perfectly fine for lesbian and gay daters, and in fact, you know, dating apps may even have a certain advantage for LGBT populations because it's harder to find your people. But for the heteros and the bisexuals, bisexuals? It's a little problem. And not just in the obvious ways, either. There are a lot of ways that sex ratio imbalances can affect our dating and mating behavior. So let's start with the obvious. This creates an extremely competitive environment for men on apps who may feel like it's hard to, you know, get a fair shot. They're spending all this time and nothing's really coming out of it. Meanwhile, women are bombarded with said sausage and may become overwhelmed. Consider, for instance, that to get a match, a woman needs to swipe right on just three guys. But for men, they need to swipe right on more than 50 women. With one exception, the top 10% of men get matches at about the same rate as the top 10% of women. But outside of that privileged bubble of beautiful people who all want to f*** each other, it just gets more and more dismal the deeper you go. The bottom 10% of men only get about one match per week, while the bottom 10% of women still get about one match a day. Interestingly, this sex ratio issue isn't limited to apps alone. It can happen in pretty much any dating market. There's a growing body of research documenting this happening amongst college-educated daters as well. Why? Well, women are graduating at higher and higher rates than men. So if you intend to get with someone who shares your educational level, which by the way is the overwhelming norm, that makes for a very competitive atmosphere for straight by college-educated women. So let's talk less obvious. The effects of sex ratio imbalances have been studied since the 70s, and the gist is basically this. When there's a surplus of men, the dating culture tends to emphasize romance and courtship. When there's a surplus of women, the dating culture tends to emphasize sex. And the early studies found that people actually have better sex in these more sex uh, centered dating cultures, but it has some downsides too. Women deal with higher rates of objectification and they have fewer choices of partner if they want to settle down and have a family. Given the potential for reinforcing stereotypes here, I do want to emphasize that these are broad cultural patterns over time. They don't necessarily reflect individual experiences, which can vary widely. Back to Tinder, all this could mean something interesting for our cultural conversation about hookup culture on college campuses and who or what is to blame. Plenty of people have blamed dating apps for hookup culture. And you know, if hookup culture does indeed exist, it's possible that the sex ratios and our perceptions of sex ratios are playing a role in this behavior as well. Let's think about it. Tinder's greatest allure is offering us, you know, an endless buffet of options. So if it seems like there's a surplus of women available, even though there's not, it seems possible that this could drive a more sex-centered dating culture as well. So plenty there to chew on, but of course, none of this answers the question about why why dating apps are so male dominated to begin with. The traditional explanation here would be sexual selection theory. You've probably heard of this. The theory goes that women are more selective about who she chooses to have sex with because the potential costs 
uh, reproductively are higher for her, whereas men may be less discerning because their reproductive costs are lower. We also know that dating apps have more appeal to people who are interested in casual sex, and so, you know, two plus two equals sausage fest. But as tidy of an explanation as that may be, there is one little factoid that kind of throws this theory for a loop. Tinder's sex ratio didn't used to be this imbalanced. As recently as 2015, it was more like 60-40. So that means that over time, women aren't signing up for dating apps at the same rate, and or they're logging off. If the multi-billion dollar invention of female-centric dating apps are any indication, the fuckboy contingency is a big part of the problem. Problem isn't that all dudes are insufferable creeps who treat women on apps like blow up sex dolls. It's just that there are enough of that type of guy that pretty much every woman is going to encounter that when she uses dating apps. That's how we got things like Bumble, but actually even Bumble can't claim a win here because their app is still 67% male. So I have a few more tidbits uh, for you to consider about dating apps in light of this sex ratio theory, if that's what you wanna call it. The first is that in environments where there's a lot of competition, people tend to um, lie out their ass. And you can apply this to any competitive situation, right? Take uh, capitalism. As industrialization took full effect, the federal government had to interfere because there was so much false advertising. So not surprising that in a competitive dating market, there's quite a bit of truth stretching to be found, especially about things that might set someone apart right off the bat, like their appearance, you know, saying they're taller or thinner, or whatever than they actually are, the degrees they hold, I've unfortunately encountered that one, as well as signals of their socioeconomic class. And sure, individually, these might, you know, seem like little white lies that are harmless, and maybe they are, but in the aggregate, it creates a dating culture where people start to distrust each other. Number two, the paradox of choice, that while it might seem like more choices should make us happier because we can find the most perfect mate of all, it actually ends up making us more are miserable. And even if you don't use apps, or you're already in a relationship, right, we are all keenly aware of how many choices lay just a few clicks away. The mere presence of this tool can overwhelm us with considerations about our partner, what we want, what a perfect partner for us might look like, and this can make it harder for us to commit to them. And even worse, the paradox of choice has been shown to make us feel less satisfied when we do make a decision and to constantly be kind of second guessing ourselves. Who doesn't need a little more self-doubt in their life, am I right? As a side note on this one, I wonder if the paradox of choice that's come with dating apps informing our dating culture um, has driven some of the increased interest in polyamory as a relationship style. I also wonder if the presence of dating apps has made it easier for people in toxic or abusive relationships to walk away because, you know, at least in theory, you know that there are more choices for you out there. Okay, my final observation of the spill out here, it seems like dating apps are making it a little more, um, awkward maybe to connect with people the old fashioned way in real life. From what I can tell, this mostly applies to Gen Z because they are the first generation to not know a dating world without apps. You know, it feels more normal to connect over a dating app or, or even Instagram, or maybe it just feels less risky. Now I wonder if this dynamic of approaching someone in person was not made more complicated by Me Too. During Me Too, the types of things that make women feel uncomfortable or threatened were discussed all over the internet. And that was obviously a very important and overdue conversation. But there hasn't been as much discussion about, okay, well, how can a thoughtful and compassionate guy approach a woman in a way that isn't weird? Can he? Should he? What if you're interested in someone you work with? Is that totally off limits now? You know, what is the new protocol? Now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder if, you know, that alone doesn't drive some guys to use apps instead as well. All right, I hope I'm not coming off as a Luddite who thinks dating apps are horrible here, but I do think there are some things we should be considering and talking about more widely because it might help us figure out how to have better dating app experiences and also how to create a better dating app market. One of my friends, Michael, he started the dating app Sweet Pea to deliberately challenge some of this algorithmic nastiness that happens with dating apps. And part of that is also just these apps are not transparent about it, right? All right, my dears, I would love to know your thoughts on this. I would also love to know, you know, are there certain topics bouncing around in your head right now related to sex and relationships that might be interesting discussions to have here on my channel? Doing live streams regularly now, I've realized how much I miss talking about sex and um, you guys are so thoughtful and I feel like, yeah, it's just fun. So let's do it. All right, my dears, I'll see you next time.